Bad trademarks for crying out loud. It seems like everyone and their mother is filing a trademark, but it's not just on things like random words like Reebok or Pepsi or Coca-Cola. No, we're starting to trademark words like the, cocky, and everything else in between. So we wanna tell you about the trademark error you need to know about, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you stay tuned. Welcome to Self-Publishing with Dale and Kelly. And if you want to learn how to publish your books and build your brand, make sure that you subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single broadcast every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Before we start up things, this is brought to you in part by... Do you want to learn more about publishing books and building your brand? Then connect with me on a more intimate level at twitch.tv slash self-publish. Catch new extended live broadcasts every Monday and Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us next week on Thursday, August 23rd at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for best ways to make money on Amazon in 2018. The mega online retailer is more than just for selling books and t-shirts. Find out other ways to make money on Amazon in 2018 so you diversify your business today. Oh my! Fancy transitions, baby. We're on fire right now. But it appears like my freaking chat's not working, so go figure. We're not going to see any of the fancy chats right over here that we normally do. But beggars can't be choosy. I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to roll with the punches. Who all's in the house, baby? Let's hear you shout it out. If you're lurking about, I just want to at least say, hey, what up? How's it going? Kevin McGuire, best-selling author. The guy's crushing it right now. Kathy, Kathy Mankin, it's good to see you. Rose Rose, this is the second time we've seen Rose Rose today. Rose Rose, you get a rose. It's kind of like the bachelorette or bachelor. Uh, there's roses involved in that. Uh, but at any rate, two blue eyes. Who else do we got, Kelly? Uh, Kathy Mankin, Mojo, Kevin. Uh, I'm sure Keith is here. I just don't see you. There you are. Um, Ernie, good to see you. I don't know if you're new. You sound new. I don't recognize your name, so welcome. Ernie Brave Boys, good to see you joining us in here. Ava. Oh my God, quit screaming. LOL. Oh, sorry. Let me let me kick this back. Actually, I'm probably peeking out the microphone. Um, there we go. Dave Kadoff, good to see you. Thank you for joining on in here, Dave Kadoff. Thank you, Ava. I appreciate you. Uh, calling me on the, the screen. You're like, quit screaming, I'm excited. I'm all revved up. Stuff worked out just really well. Luxury card store, it's good to see you. I believe Eula is your name. Hey, Eula, it's kind of a forget, unforgettable name. Robert Blossom, good to see you. Stephen Martin, who Crypto, else do we got? Knitting Crypto Mommy. Crypto Merch Club, um, Night Temple. Yeah, Knitting Mommy, haven't seen you for a while. Hope Ooh. life is good. Um, yeah, I'm super excited Dave Kadoff's in the house. He's a, he's a big dude in the trademark troll world. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm really glad you joined us because today we want to make this a two-way conversation because I'm not a lawyer, are you? No. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't think so. Law school uh, was going to take too long and no. too expensive. Yeah, I don't really, I've got the attention span of like two fruit flies, to be honest here. So, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about trademarks and this is going to affect not just publishers and authors, but this is affecting some of you that are in the merch world. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of talk a little bit about this. If you're not aware of what's going on with these whole bad trademarks, well, you get ready to get informed, get a pencil out, get a piece of paper. And I'd like to hear from you within the chat. Let's, like I said, let's make this a two-way conversation and let's make this a party. Invite a friend, Kelly. Sure. Invite a friend. All right. So with that being said, let's go on over into and I'm on the wrong screen. So hang on, we're gonna come back. Uh, Lord knows I try to fix some of these things, but you know, um, why don't we see about fixing this? While he's doing the technical stuff, congrats Knitting Mommy for your best months ever. Um, what month are we in? We're in August, July and August are really super hard months to have be your best months ever. So kudos to you. Share it to Twitter. Thank you so much. Crossroads Publishing. I'm here. Not why, not sure why it says Crossroads Publishing instead of John Wasser. You must be in a different Google account. I don't know. I'm not a techie. 
Well, we're gonna have to roll with the punches. We're having some technical issues. Uh, okay. It's not registering on our, our other thing here. So let's go ahead and talk. Uh, sorry, we're gonna be able to have the uh, PowerPoints that we normally do here, folks but we're gonna be able to read off of them. So if you see Kelly looking on over there, we're gonna talk about bad trademarks, protect your assets. And uh, first three letters in assets. Uh, so let's just give, give this a little talk, uh, a little bit of an overview of what is up. So Kelly, tell me, what's the deal with the trademark? Well, a trademark, generally speaking, is just a symbol, words, registered, and it's supposed to be used to establish a brand supposed to yeah so how does it pertain to us the viewing audience here well for example for dummies that's a well-known brand mm -hmm. um, bullet Trademark. journal for some of those people just starting in a no content books if you use bullet journal you know as you've seen there's ways to get around it but right. bullet journal is trademarked and if you're in merch, there's many other um, trademarks, like World's Okayest is trademarked. Mm -hmm. You know, World's Okayest, whatever. You know, the owner of that trademark, if they complain to Amazon, Amazon's just gonna take it down. Amazon is super vanilla, super conservative. They don't look into the validity of it at first. Right. Um, if, you know, I have a trademark, I think you're infringing on it. They just complain and Amazon is like, okay, I'm going to take it down. So that's that. Okay, I'm missing the visuals on this, but we can go ahead. Let's go, let's take a stroll down memory lane. And this is only going to access your short-term memory here. Do you remember one red-headed romance author that trademarked the word cocky? I do. I do. I do. Anybody remember the name? Let's see if anybody can recall that. If you happen to be watching this on the replay, I want you to go ahead and drop it on in here and let me know what your thoughts are of that red-headed author. Um, so let's give it just a second. The first person to say it gets a banana sticker. The first person to say it gets a banana sticker. She caused a big uproar in the indie author community and I even had a very cool lawyer that came to this and author, Kevin Newper. And we talked a little bit about trademark. Nope, nobody remembers it. Uh, Mojo, <laughs> well, there you go. K Wheeler Books, you get yourself a banana stick for that, buddy. Yes, it is. Felina Hopkins. Yes, that was a, that was a mess, man. Uh, what happened is, and let's give you a little bit of a backstory. What did she do, Kelly? Um, you know more than I do. You've had it on your channel. Yeah. From my knowledge, she trademarked the word cocky. Mm -hmm. um, One and, word, right? And I forget what uh, classes it was, though. Right. She had two different types of trademarks. And we're just going to go ahead and push off the other one that was like Cocker Brothers of Atlanta. She just did one, and it was just for the actual um, word itself, okay? And then there was the actual design that she had which we can go down a whole rabbit trail that she filed a trademark on a font that she didn't have permission to do, and that caused a whole uproar. But what ended up happening is she went, she went and filed it last year, the registration came through back in May, and she immediately sent out cease and desist to people that had the word cocky in it. Everybody went berserk. And this is one of the times that I was really proud to be an indie author, a part of the indie author community, because we all work together towards a common mission. And it wasn't to snuff her out. It was to show that this is not acceptable. This isn't cool. You can't just go take one stinking word and claim it as your own. I think Cocky's been around longer than she's been alive. And for her to consider that her association, well, at any rate, uh, she, you know, if there was a whole court battle, legal battle, in the end, the registration's gone on that. Thank you, goodbye, good riddance. But here's the problem. Everybody lost what, Kelly? Everyone lost money. Mm -hmm. They probably lost maybe their ranks, um, time. Time is, you know, lose time and money. And time is irreplaceable. It's, you know, we can always go back and make more money. We can always make our best seller ranks. But the thing is, is it ruined a lot of our time. So we're going to talk on pros and cons of this whole trademark thing. We're going to look at different sides of it. You know, if you're thinking about trademarking something, please, if you learn anything, unless you've invented a word like Glorblabblebibbin, by the way, I'm gonna trademark that, patent pending. Uh, I just came up with that, sorry, that patent pending. That, what, what is that? That's an invention, I just invented a word. 
But uh, this really is just so important. What is this called, Kelly? When somebody trademarks a word, one word, and wants to go around and pretty much shut everybody out of business. Well, when they're trying to trademark a word and not trying to establish a brand of it, because if you want to trademark, I don't know, poop, but you want to establish a poop brand or something, um, go on with your bad self. But if you're just trying to trademark one word to um, cut everyone out of the market Mm -hmm. from, you know, making money, you're bullying and you're a trademark troll. Sorry. And believe it or not, this was something in the uh, Kevin Newper uh, conversation and on the replay, I'll make sure to put that link inside the uh, description below, um, but you can always just look it up, Kevin Newper, Dale L. Roberts, uh, it was a great conversation. People showed up in droves and he shared just a little bit of 411 on trademark bullying and trademark trolling. And this isn't the first occasion, this has been going on a long time. This has been longer than I've been alive and that's not very long, but even longer so. And so that, that was where I was kind of surprised. I'm like, wow, people do that? I guess if you've got the discretionary expense to file for a frivolous trademark and try to push people out of business, you know, that's bullying. That means, hey, I've got more money than you and now I'm just gonna push you out of business so you don't get any. So how, the big question is, how do you protect yourself? Kelly, we do need to make a disclaimer, don't we? We're not lawyers. We're not dispensing legal advice. This is just our experience. And we're sharing what we know with you. By no means are we perfect. And yeah. Awesome. Um, So here's the deal. My very first one, I get this one. Don't be a dick. It's like literally, I need to get a shirt that says that. Just don't be a dick. Don't intentionally steal people's intellectual property. Now, I'm not saying that whoever had instigated this whole Felina Hopkins situation was a dick or they were intentionally stealing the the intellectual property, but there are other people out there that do that. I know that someone encroached over on something that you had and it wasn't even trademarked, but they went in and they took one of your no content books and literally just stole stole it outright with one slight variation. Yeah, I didn't trademark this phrase. However, this person uh, created a book that looked exactly like it. And just like he said, make one slight variation. It wasn't trademarked, but they stole my stuff. So I reported to Amazon and Amazon took it down. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Yeah, do, do me a favor, folks, is um, if you're, you're enjoying this so far and getting some of this information, let's, let's invite some more people over there. Tweet this out. Hashtag, don't be a dick. Hashtag, trademark trolls. And let people know, we ain't standing for this. There ain't no way. I'm not standing for that. So, <laughs> Kelly, next point for this, and how do we protect ourselves? Pretty much just study up on it. Um, If you're in the merch world, you'll see in the terms of service that Amazon goes by USPTO. Um, But if you... Which represents what? You got to break it down for us. USPTO. USPTO USPTO.gov, United States Patent and Trademark Office. Correct. Um, If you are super confused, it's a little pricey, but if you need help, you can always consult a lawyer in your area. Well, the nice thing is about this, and I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, in the Kevin Newper interview, believe it or not, There are, based on what your position is and how much of a brand you've built, there are actually some lawyers out there that are willing to work pro bono in exchange for that that exposure. So if you're dealing with some kind of a trademark troll, you could probably put it out there and find somebody who's willing to work with you pro bono. So something to note, once again, take a look at that interview. It's gonna give you great information. This is probably one of my most favorite interviews because he gave so much valuable information and that was one of them. I was like, really? Lawyers are willing to work? Like for free for me? Like that's crazy. So just to note that, you won't have to end up you know, spending thousands if you just find the right person. But more than likely, they're not gonna be advertised in your local yellow pages if they have that anymore. We'll work for a pro, you know, for free. Right. You kind of got to, you know, do Good. the work. Due diligence, yes, exactly. Um, and there's other websites that we use, but yeah. like I said, um, the king of it all is USPTO.gov. Correct. Yep. That's that's really where it comes. Um, before we go any further, my question is, 
when we're looking at trademarks, what do I need to be looking for? Because I know that sometimes we'll see that someone's filing it, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's registered yet, correct? You have to look for the registration number. Okay. Um, that's pretty much, if there's not a registration number in it, it might still say live. Okay. Like I said, I'm not a lawyer, but you know, this is my you know, interpretation and this is what other videos that I've watched have said. It, it might still say live, but they might need more documentation. They might be going through appeals. There's a whole number of different things. So the main thing is looking for that registration number on the um, trademark. Okay, yeah, good, excellent. Uh, it, it's, it takes a little bit of time, and one of the things I would really, really recommend that you do is you get together with other um, entrepreneurs, self-publishers, merch, merchandise um, entrepreneurs as well, uh, get into some kind of masterminds. This is one of the times I'll shamelessly plug my Facebook group, our Facebook group. It's Self Publishing Books. All you got to do is just go on to Facebook.com, search up Self Publishing Books. If you want to get added to the group, please answer the three questions. Once you get in there, this is a great time that you can kind of build dialogue between other, other people and start to say, okay, I, I'm kind of concerned about the trademarks. It's okay to ask questions, and this is outside even the confines of Facebook. Make sure you ask questions because one of the worst things that can happen is, for instance, I had a good friend of mine a couple of years ago had put out a book with uh, the TRX system, the uh, suspension training system. He put it out, and I'm like, I just assumed that he got permission from the people that own the trademark to TRX and suspension training system. And nope, they, he didn't. He was able to get it up there, got a fair amount of sales, but the problem was, um, yeah, they saw that and they didn't, they didn't give him what, what Felina did to the other authors. What TRX did was, they called up Amazon and was like, that's our stuff, take it down. And essentially, it got wiped out and his account got suspended, no pun intended. And uh, he gets hold of me, he's like, what happened? And I'm like, you mean you didn't get the trademark approved? You didn't have, get permission for this? And he's like, no, why didn't you tell me? I was like, I just assumed. <laughs> so um, that's, that's the crazy thing. So this is normally the time that I go to say, how do you watch out for bad trademarks? What are some of the systems and processes that you do? Do you agree with some of our advice? And what would you recommend? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And as we said, we're gonna share some of our resources here right after our brief commercial break. But in the meantime, I wanna hear from you. What would you recommend? And let's hear from you. Drop it inside the comments, those of you inside the live chat, and those of you who are listening on the replay. Let's do it. Cast is brought to you in part by do you want to learn more about publishing books and building your brand? Then connect with me on a more intimate level at twitch.tv slash self-publish. Catch new extended live broadcasts every Monday and Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us next week on Thursday, August 23rd at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for best ways to make money on Amazon in 2018. The mega online retailer is more than just for selling books and t-shirts. Find out other ways to make money on Amazon in 2018 so you diversify your business today. Zero. How fun is that? So, um, all right. So now that we got it kind of loaded up, um, let's just go. Let's go over inside the chat, and we're going to share some of our resources as we kind of go through. So, questions, concerns, comments, uh, shout outs that we can make. I see that Crypto Merch Club just popped on in here. Uh, Walker Publications, it's great to see you join the conversation. Stephen Martin, glad to see you, buddy. Um. Yes, Walker did comment there is a difference between a copyright and a trademark. Correct. Yes, absolutely. There is a difference between copyright and trademark. Um, let's see. Crypto Merch Club, Mama Bear. Mm -hmm. I think that one's trademarked. Um, I actually have never looked it up or unless it's being protested because when I search Mama Bear on uh, merch, there's so much out there. So I'm like, next. Um... Let's see. If you use Book Penguin, would that be a trademark? There's a big book publisher called mm. Penguin Books. I have a friend who's using it and would like to give him some advice. Opinions. What is your end game? I mean, that's it is really what it comes down to. I mean, do you plan on massively expanding? Do you already have a brand that's set up on that? Because to me, uh, one of the worst things I, I see a lot of entrepreneurs doing and, and as publishers and authors is they throw money at things on unproven concepts. 
uh, it, you know, kudos to you, it's awesome. If you got a couple hundred bo bucks to file a trademark, keep in mind that for however many types of trademarks of you know, the type that it is, it's gonna cost more. So if this person's wanting to invest in something like Book Penguin, um, it's gonna cost them. And what's their end goal? Are they, you know, are they wanting to bully them out? Then I say, no, don't do that. That might not be a good idea, especially for someone that's established like Penguin Books. Um, what do you say about that? I mean, it's not just trademarks, it's also, that's so freaking similar to the average reader. Mm -hmm. You know, they might get confused as well, so I would just pick something different. You know, not yeah. even talking about trademarks. It's just too much. Yeah, if you've got if you've got an established brand, and I mean, like literally you've been cemented in here, like I haven't even considered trademarking the home workout plan. And that's been around since 2014. So um, I don't I don't plan on doing it either. Which you know, by the way, that just would be silly if I did it. But you know, that just just kind of illustrate a point that you know, if you've got a brand you really built it on there, and it makes sense that way people aren't trying to rob your identity and start masquerading about like you, you know. But otherwise, you know, filing the trademark just kind of file the trademark. You can use your money on advertising or hiring out. And filing trademarks is not cheap. I believe not. it's like 300 minimum just to file, but yeah. I've never tried, so it, it I'm depends. not positive. Yeah, yeah. if you're, you plan on doing it by your, on your own or hiring a good lawyer, which I'd recommend that you do so you're not ending up uh, ass out without any money, uh, you know, it's, it's not cheap and it's also time consuming. Let's just go ahead and look at uh, someone like Felina Hopkins. She filed it last September. It showed up May. It took that long for that single word. So you can only imagine how tedious it is. And I think, you know, call me crazy, I think eventually the USPTO is going to be a bit more discerning about what's coming across their plate because it's turning into a real poop show, well, family-friendly version. Well, it's definitely getting better and yeah. there's just so much out there. So we'll talk about how it's getting better in a minute. Yeah. But um, Crossroads Publishing, could I trademark something like my copyrighted t-shirt slogan, Bogus POTUS? That's uh, John Wasser, good to see you, buddy. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. That's, nah, I, unless it, you are establishing a brand. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but just to, tra no, don't don't waste your money. It, it seems to me that, yeah, you need to make sure that there's proof of concept. And when I mean proof of concept, this, this particular thing needs to be pulling you in at least four figures per month, if not five figures. I probably wouldn't go after it, um, especially since POTUS represents President of the United States. Um, I'm not even sure you're gonna be able to get away with even trademarking if it hasn't already been trademarked. That's how insane this whole deal is right now. Um, let's see. And we'll be able to tell you here in just a moment how we research stuff. And I know that you're using it for a shirt design. Um, so we're, we're going to share with you how we research and find some stuff fairly easy. Um, Dave Kadoff clarified live just means in process. It's not necessarily registered yet. Correct. So, and I didn't know this, Walker Publications, the bar associates in all states will do a one hour session to make a recommendation on your issue. It's usually mm. about 25 to $45 for the hour session, which is a heck of a lot cheaper than hiring a lawyer. Right. But I'm, I don't know how many recommendations they'll make if they'll sit with you for an hour and talk about a hundred trademarks. I don't know, mm -hmm. but that's really good to know. Um, let's see. There's a documentary on Netflix called The Patent Scam for people scamming for patent Ooh. requirements. Wow, okay. Thank um, you for looking out right there on that. I appreciate that. Anybody else has little tips like that, um, please drop them in here. We, we love hearing that. I'm going to check that out for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dave, we're going to talk about that in just a second. Okay. They are freaking awesome. I'll just say it right now. He says um, the trademark watchdogs group on Facebook has lots of info, videos, okay. PDFs. Let's go ahead and let's pivot right into this. So let's talk about our preferred trademark research tools. And you're going to, you, you inform me on this one about the Facebook group called trademark watchdogs. It's getting huge. Okay. I believe if Dave, you're still watching, they just hired a VA to help fight some um, trademark trolls, mm -hmm. um, but there's tons of information on there to help stop frivolous trademarks. I think there's thousands of people in the group. I, right. I forget the exact number, but it's really good. And everyone there is so freaking nice. I need to get more active right. in that group. And that's dogs, like D-A-W-G-S. Yes. So, 
uh, be be aware of that if you're looking it up. Um, and this is another you know testimony to networking and working together and masterminding with other professionals because in something like this you get strength in numbers. So you might have somebody who has a deeper pocket pockets than you individually, but when you work together with other people, you can really band together and get some of these scabs out of our business. Yes, but other websites, uh, we just said earlier, Amazon Standard is the USPTO, US Patent and Trademark Office. Um, TM Hunt will do the t-shirts. Um, I personally rely on that. I've been told it's not 100% perfect. I kind of take my risks since Amazon says it's USPTO is the standard. Yeah. So go with that info as you choose. And there's some people I know who use Trademarkia I think that's a cluster, but that's just my opinion. She's keeping it. She's keeping it PG here, folks. Uh, yeah, it, it is a real, real mess. Uh, I, I like TM Hunt for merch. I like looking up that that's the stuff on there, um, and it's fairly easy when it comes to book titling too uh, to kind of discern what's trademark and what's not. Because in most instances, most professional, you know, organizations and publishers will actually put the TM on their uh, publication over on their product details page over on Amazon and other pages like that because I mean they went through the trouble to file it and get it registered so they usually put it but it's usually a collection of words uh, not just a single word or like a made up word once again going back to the well on something like Pepsi Cola or Reebok or you know things like that. Right, um, Kevin McGuire, I don't know if this was answered, um, People are fighting the bad trademarks and doing a good job of it, but that's reactionary. We need to be proactive. Has anyone thought about getting the laws changed to stop frivolous trademarks? I haven't spent much time in the group, unfortunately. I would think that, I, I know for sure they're doing a good job of getting some reversed, and I know they're bringing awareness to the office. I don't know the entire steps that would be needed to actually change the law. Mm -hmm. But with POD, print on demand, being such a new concept, I, I'm sure it's coming. Um, but that's all I have to say about that because I don't, I'm not as educated as I should be. Yeah, I think it would probably be a case, and Kevin McGuire, you bring up a really good point. Um, possibly, and this is, you know, by the way, Dave Kadoff uh, said, uh, come on in, the water's great. Um, this, this is another prime example that you can probably start with something like this and present questions like this in a larger group format because there's going to be a lot more people that are going to be willing to say, okay, let's do this first. And um, yeah, I think that they need to have a better system of auditing what's coming across their desk and kind of knowing instantly, you're trademarking the word the, come on, get out of here. You know, you're trademarking the word me, no, go. You know, things like that. That just gets ridiculous. And the problem is, is if you are in this business, and as most of you probably are, you probably have some kind of a business revenue over through Amazon in some capacity. Amazon literally is just, they, they are just reactionary. And if it's, if it's trademark or they find that there's a trademark to it, they're gonna strike you down. They'll, they'll get rid of you first because they don't wanna deal with the person who's got that apparently deeper pockets and have filed that trademark. And they're like, I don't feel like going to court. We're just gonna shut you down. So that's really kind of the scary thing and um, something to kind of bear in mind that you and want to be cautious about. Dave said earlier, Mama Bear for T-shirts class 20025 was protested. Um, so that's awesome. So it was no longer trademarked. Awesome. Um, I wanted to also say that um, the office gets so many applications. They're just doing their job. They're just going through it all. And it's got to be a madhouse right you now. Know, from my understanding, some of the evidence, they just see it and they don't really have a full understanding. You what know, was the evidence? Some of the worst, like you showed me one, I was like, what? There's some, there's some Photoshop stuffed out there, um, but there's so many classes. From my understanding, they could see an application for t-shirts and then they could see an application for something completely different. So they're just doing their best. So the watchdogs is good at helping, you know, helping them out, gather more evidence. And he did say they did just hire a VA to gather evidence in over 4,600 people. So yes. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, that, sounds like, that sounds like a winner to me. Um, that picture behind us is our wedding photo, Kathy. <laughs> 
Um, so we can't hang up too much here because the door opens over top of these things. Uh, Beauty Bubble, thank you so much for joining that group. They appreciate it. It's really cool. Um, and thank you, Dave, for staying, you know, for the entire thing. I appreciate it. HR Romero, good to see you. It's okay if you're late. There's always a replay. Um, let's see. Um, Excellent. I think that's... Um, kind of firing it off right here. All right, hey, before we start to kind of wrap things up, uh, today... Last week we had Vociferous, and you guys answered in droves. So let's see if you've made it this far today. How appropriate. Today's word of the day is vilified. Define vilified and use this word in a sentence. And make sure you drop that inside the live chat or the comments on the replay. And anybody that answers gets a banana stick. Oh yeah, vilified. How appropriate is that? So in any event, uh, do you, uh, by the way, you've been killing it over on the live chats lately. How can people get a hold of you there, Kelly? Join me over my YouTube channel, Kelly Publish, at Kelly with an I. Um, you wore everybody out earlier. And you had 43 people, and now we're down to 30 here. What happened? I had so much fun earlier today. Um, my lives are, you know, Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern. And I'm going to be adding Thursdays at noon. I had such a good response today. Yeah. I may start to add Saturdays too. However, with our travel schedule coming up, you know, I know we're going to miss some lives both on my channel and yours. So yeah. I don't want to overwhelm um, with having to do so many pre tape videos. Yeah. So um, that may come after we're done traveling, yeah. maybe October, November. Uh, uh, speaking of, uh, before we do go any further, I, I do have something on my site over at selfpublishingwithdale.com. It hasn't been filled in yet, but I actually have underneath the about. Uh, my good, uh, great assistant extraordinaire, Ava Fails, actually set up my schedule. I'm going to start to fill in the dates. And we're going to be, if we're going to be in your neck of the woods, Please, let's meet up. We'd love to chat. Um, you know, it'd be great if we can get a good group format, have a cup of coffee or even a milkshake or even just a cup of water. It doesn't matter to us. But we're going to be in various necks of the woods. That is, let's see here, we're going to be in Dallas, Texas, week after next for Video Marketing World. Then Orlando. Then Orlando Van Book Net Fest. That's going to be for my birthday, right around September 9th. Um, we are heading to, well, we're heading to the merch conference in Seattle, but we're heading okay. to Vancouver a few days before that to visit some business friends. Vancouver, and we're then, shouting you out. Come on now, meet up with us. Um, from Vancouver to Seattle, we're taking a train down, which I usually don't like sitting on my butt that long. However, I think the scenery is going to be gorgeous, so I'm looking yeah. forward to that. And then after Seattle... I have some of the greatness here in Columbus um, a couple days after we get back. And then a couple days after that, we're going out to Vid Summit in LA. Los Angeles. And we're going to be there for nearly a week. So um, we're going to be around there. We'll probably drink a little bit more extra caffeine. We might be doing some remote uh, shooting. We're going to be doing some collaborations with very pe various people within the industry. Uh, but we want to just say, hey, you happen to be in the area, and if you gotta drive just a little bit, come on, meet up with us. We we definitely want love to hear from you and see you. Um, I'm gonna have more details on my website at selfpublishingwithdale.com, and you're gonna find it in the about section. Uh, Ava, correct me if I'm wrong. I know that she's hopefully tuning in, maybe lurking just about. Uh, definitely, Dave Kadoff. We'll see you in Seattle. I would love to meet up with you. It'd be great to maybe have a chat with you a little bit more about this whole trademark debacle. Well, any last words, Kelly? H.R. Romero lives in Dallas, so uh, hit either one of us up and we will talk to you behind the scenes. Yeah, for sure. So, hey, if you enjoyed today's video and you haven't done so already, click that thumbs up and make sure that you share it with somebody else who would enjoy it too. In the meantime, in between time, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale and Kelly, and we will see you soon.